Morrowind is not for the weak, Lalu. You asked for this. I have too many Morrowind mods, over 200. I'm gonna cover every single one of them in this video. I'm gonna go through a lot of them quickly because they're easy to install and let you pick whether or not you like them and whether or not you want to install them. But in this video, I'm gonna cover all of the mods that I'm using. And I wanna make a note right now, do not be afraid to mod with OpenMW. If you saw my last video, I said we use OpenMW. That's the new way to do it. That's the best way to do Morrowind in the modern era. I've had zero crashes thus far. I'm also playing on Windows. You can play this on Linux or on Android, but it's time to do an ad for Windows. So let's uh, take care of a little capitalism and then we'll be back to talk about all these mods. Before we get started, let's head over to WhoKeys and unlock our copy of Windows. By using coupon code TS25, you can get 25% off these prices here. I use Windows 10 Pro. You can also get Windows 10 Home, and both of these will upgrade to Windows 11. You can get that. Also, note that the Windows 10 keys have been working with Windows 11. Google it and make sure that this is still a thing whenever you're purchasing your key. Also, I want to note that if you get Windows 10 Home and you upgrade it to Windows 11, they will force you to use an online account. With Windows 11 Pro, however, you can use a local account, just so you know. You can also get Office 2019 with that same discount. Or if you like, you can get Windows 10 Pro and Office 2019 in a bundle and save even more. So go ahead and put TS25 in here as your coupon code, hit it apply, and then you can see we can get Windows 10 Pro for $14.85. Once you're finished, if you want to access your key, you click on your name on the top right, click on User Center, and you'll see my purchase orders. Right here, you'll be able to view the keys that you've purchased just by clicking on View Keys and Codes. Then you will see your code right here. Just go ahead and copy this code, press Start, type Activate, and you'll see activation settings come up. Click on that, then click change product key. Right there, you can paste in your code and hit next, and then you will be activated. It's very simple. So don't pay those retail prices for your copy of Windows or Office. Head over to whokeys.com and use coupon code TS25. Now this is what my game looks like. If you want to see an entire walkthrough or a walk around, just wait till the end of the video and I will walk around and just cut some footage of different parts of the world so you can see what it looks like with all these mods. So, And if you don't really care about my mod list and you just want to see what my Morrowind looks like and watch me jump around like a goof, uh, I've got a, an amulet that I made with a constant uh, boost to my athletics. So <laughs> yeah, I could fly around like crazy, got mega jump going on. But anyway, if you want to just see what my world looks like, you can skip to the end or you can just watch the whole video and then also watch the end. That's what I would do. Head over to moddingopenmw.com and here we have all these different lists. See, so choose your different mod list, browse all lists. You can pick one if you want to do, we don't need to do total overhaul in my opinion, but if you want to do graphics overall, you can pick that one. I prefer the expanded vanilla. It's a little uh, less crazy. And this one lets you go through the mods and it tells you what to do one at a time. For even the more difficult ones, like this one has some extra stuff. It says right here, you know, it tells you what's required for each mod and it tells you uh, details. And you can go to the download page. And then once you're finished, you can just go to the next mod on the list. It's pretty easy. There's the download page for this one. So I do recommend using OpenMW and picking and choosing your mods. But right now I'm gonna go through all the mods that I use. So I use OAB Data. This is a large repository of assets that other mods use and also uh, OAAB uses it. OAAB stands for Of Ash and Blight. So it's a um, overhaul to Vardenfell. And then I also use a lot of these mods. Uh, they essentially add some more dialogue and stuff in the cities. It's text, not spoken dialogue. Just adds a little more life to the cities. Um, if you're going to install any of these mods, these are not on the Nexus. I installed all of them, but I want to note that um, there's a patch here for soul sickness. When you install the mods the first time, it adds soul sickness. Whenever you rest or sleep anywhere that there is an ash stat statue, if there's an ash statue anywhere near you, it will give you soul sickness and it's awful. So download and install this patch if you're going to install any of these other ones here. Just make sure that's installed. I use a couple mods to make the game a little uh, better and darker and moodier. So you'll need to install this, the total light and darkness. All right, so there's a lot of little patches to install, like the Morrowind optimization patch. You can install that. Uh, patch for Purists, this is a mesh 
patch that fixes a lot of the meshes in the game. I installed them all in this order. We're going in the order that I have them installed, so they're not going to be categorized or anything like that. Unofficial Morrowinds plugin patched. It's basically got all the uh, all the official plugins all patched together, so you can just install that. Then we have Tamriel Rebuilt, which adds a huge chunk of land to the game and plenty new characters to the already vanilla game, um, more quests, and it adds a lot of really vanilla friendly stuff, new travel systems and stuff. You can install this. There's also the, uh, oh, thanks very much for doing that while I'm, um, people following me while I'm not even streaming. Cool. Tamriel Rebuilt. It also has Tamriel Rebuilt, Rebuilt Preview that adds another continent that's not finished. It has empty cities and stuff, but I installed it just so I could look around, but I would recommend if it's your first time playthrough, do not install the preview content because you'll get lost in areas that are not finished and be like, well, what's going on? So uh, even Seedier 8 Plates is totally optional. It's a place in Balmora, just like a tavern. This makes it even darker and seedier. Not necessary. Dwemer Mesh improvement. Yep, make those Dwemer Meshes better. This is better than the GTA uh, 3 update with that stupid donut place. You remember what I'm talking about. Correct Meshes, just another mech mesh fixer-upper. These are quick, you know, one, two click installs. And then Intelligent Textures. There are a lot of different texture mods out there. This one is probably the best and most vanilla friendly because it's an artificial intelligence upsampler. And there's gonna be three or four different artificial intelligence upsamplers. I've tried them all and I think this one is the most comprehensive. So it just basically takes the vanilla textures and upsamples them by a factor of four. So it looks, it keeps the vanilla look. And then the thing is I use this as my base and you can install new textures on top of this that will overwrite that using Mod Organizer 2. More mesh replacers. You know, just fixes up all these weird meshes and stuff. Install that one. Correct rock UVs. If you're not a um, 3D person, that's not going to mean anything to you. But basically, it just changes the UVs on the rock so that the textures apply properly instead of whatever the hell this is. That's what it does. Properly smoothed meshes. These are all optional. If you don't care about having smooth rounded tables and stuff, then who cares? FMI makes a few little interesting uh, updates, but pretty much all the Dunmer are slavers. Uh, and, and this one changes it so that some have a mind of their own and they are not slavers. So I installed that. FMI Nice to Meet You is a lot of fun because the dialogue system in Morrowind is kind of weird. If you haven't played it before, each character has a database worth of information and a lot of it's presented in sort of a cold way where you just walk up to them and it's almost like you're reading a Wikipedia page about lore. You can ask about services, lore, and local people. This was to allow you to go into towns and ask any person, any NPC, hey, have you seen this character? Do you know where I should go? It allows you to be an investigator, but at the cost of everyone sounding a little samey and everyone sounding kind of like just a Wikipedia article. So while it did succeed in some ways, just regular NPCs, do have stuff that they can say as opposed to like a newer game like The Witcher 3 that I felt um, was a little hollow. Other than the core characters, if you walk around these towns and stuff, the other characters just feel like set pieces. Whereas in Morrowind, they're still set pieces, but you can talk to them and they have information even though it's delivered in a very stale manner. FMI Nice to Meet You just gives each character a whole bunch of new greetings so that when you come up to them, at least that part is fresh. It's something. <laughs> and then a better dialogue font. It really cleans up the dialogue font. Highly recommended. In fact, you've got to play with this. It's the same basic font, but just look at the difference. You can see it, right? Pete Scrolls, just a scrolls texture replaced, replacement. Make them look a little cleaner now that we're all playing on much higher resolution screens and stuff like that. Ghastly Ghost Fence. It adds a really nice animated ghost fence in the game and removes the original ghastly textures, I guess. Uh, Skyrim Home of the Nords. This is a huge new chunk of land with 30 or so hours of gameplay, new quests and stuff. It attempts to recreate Skyrim uh, from the same time period as Morrowind. So it's a different, you'll, you're going to experience a different Morrowind or a different Skyrim here. And there's going to be some really big cities that exist also uh, in, in Skyrim. The modern Skyrim, but now there are only a few town, you know, a few a few buildings or whatever, because times have changed and stuff. So you'll get to experience Skyrim, but in a different way. Um, a lot of the northern parts are not finished yet, but you can still play a lot um, in this. So if you want to run around somewhere that's not Morrowind, I highly recommend this. Good mod. Graphic herbalism, you know, instead of the whole entire plant disappearing, just the part that you picked disappears. 
just a cool way to do that. The Providence of Cyrodiil. And this is just a short mod that adds a nice little, nice little town, little island. It's cool. It's pretty. I like all the clipper ships and boats or whatever these are. What is that? A, it's too small to be a frigate. I don't know. Carvel? I, I don't know. I'm not a boatographer. All right, no shield sparkle. See that shield sparkling? When you're holding that shield, it's going to do this while you're running around. It's so annoying to have a magical shield and fight in Morrowind. Like, who thought this was a good idea to have just sparkles all over the place? Because your shield's magical and you're holding it. Don't you want to see sparkles? Is that how magic items work? So get rid of that, and then it'll look like this. You'll still have your magical shield, but no nonsense. Mystify has a little ambiance. I like it, it's nice. The, a lot of the mods from, from this creator are awesome. You'll see some more of them soon. Sea of Sound. It's a uh, replacement for the, the ocean sounds because they can be very repetitive. And this one adds a little more nuance and variety. I went with the, lo the lower volume version, so it's not like right up in your face and stuff. So there's that. And then we have a few town and village replacers. Now these just make improvements to the town, still vanilla friendly, add some different you know, different things, some new areas, new characters, stuff like that. It just makes the towns feel a little more alive. The NNM team have done a great job. Um, some other mods do cause a little bit of a slowdown, but I found Aldroom was just fine. And then also this one, just a little bit of a facelift for Underscar. Uh, Scar is the big um, bug-shaped manor uh, place on the top of the hill where all the manors are and stuff. And I think this looks great. Put all these lanterns and stuff in there. It's still vanilla, I, you know, I almost, if this would have been installed on this version of the game, I probably would have just thought, oh, this is vanilla, you know, because I didn't, I haven't played this in, since I was a kid, so, but installing it now, it's like, oh, that is nice. Uh, wares, just another, gives traders more wares, and works with Tamriel Rebuilt as well. Silt Strider animations restored, this is very optional, just the Silt Striders that float around and stuff, they had some animations that were, um, in the code made by the Morrowind team, but they were never used, so that replaces them. Uh, Hello, Ode. Same thing. Just another little replacer or update from the NNM team. I like their stuff a lot. It just makes the towns feel a little more authentic. Let's keep on moving. Idle Talk. It adds uh, 200 new voice entries. That's right, so we got a lot more like chatter. The character barks and stuff. Here's some of the stuff. It's fun. Run around and they're all like yelling at you and stuff. Improved Ends. So this one's pretty self-explanatory. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Just add some nice ends to the world. Um, great service. Another little thing that I, I, you know, I really wanted to bring some of these NPCs to life. So this one adds 100 lines of voiced dialogue. So they were shipped with the original game, but they, for some reason, weren't used. Maybe it was because they were really stressed when they were making the game. They had a lot of stuff to do in a little amount of time, or who knows. But it's cool to have all these restored. Mines and Caverns, just a aesthetic upgrade to a lot of the Mines and Caverns, and I think it looks really good, so I installed that. And this one goes, you know, lower on the list than those other texture replacers. Unique Signs for Tamriel Rebuilt, just adds a lot of cool signs and stuff. Unique sign for each of the uh, taverns and bars. So this is for Tamriel Rebuilt, but, you know, they all get their cool little signs. Some of them are a little cheesy looking, but it's kind of cool that each one has its own unique sign instead of having a generic sign for this tavern or for all taverns and a generic sign for all of whatever. You know, it's nice. Morrowind Animated Hammocks. This is totally unnecessary, but I did it anyway just because I was trying to break my game. But it just gives the hammocks a little animation. Look at that. There we go. A little animation. That's not necessary. Uh, Vivek Guild of Mages expansion. Adds some quests. Makes the Mages Guild bigger and more interesting. Feels a little more grand. So if you're a mage and you want to do mage stuff, I would recommend checking this out. Improved Better Skulls. It's, that looks good to me. Yes, must have. 10 out of 10, y'all. So Better Sounds, just some more upgrades to the audio. So uh, normally when you have a, a bounty on your name, you have to go to the, one of the Thieves Guild people and like tell them, hey, help me clear my bounty. This one gives you new ways to like bribe officials and stuff like that. So you look at there. Or you can, you know, chat with them. Get get new ways to clear your name. Doran Council Overhaul. If you're in House for Doran, this is cool. And um, it really makes their manor grand and awesome like it should be. Just a, you know, a few updates. I love the indoor uh, uh, flora. It's pretty. Dunmer Lanterns Replacer. I love this mod because I love glowy things. 
sort of has like a Chinese, Japanese lantern style going. They do them in Korea like that too, in Taiwan as well. But you can pick the various different styles and you can pick if you want. To. I went with the, the less fancy version, but you can, you know, you can go any way you like with these. And I would recommend making sure that in OpenMW you have at least 32 light sources. I do 64. No pushover merchants. So this one just makes the uh, merchants have a higher speechcraft, I believe it is, score or something like that. So it just makes the merchants a little tougher, which is probably good. Better waterfalls, another one by this modder. It makes the waterfalls look better. It does exactly what it says. Seasonal weather of Vardenfell. This is the weather mod that I use. Works, looks good. Got nice rain, nice snow, all that stuff. Glow in the dark, one of my favorites. Makes the towns look so much more alive at night, especially when you're using darker nights and stuff like that. This little glow, you'll, you can see the towns in the distance kind of glowing and stuff. Then on the inside, it adds some, this is like the only god race we have right now. OpenMW team, please, post-process god race. It would make it so cool, but like right now we just have these canned god rays that you can see indoors and it looks really cool, but this is part of that mod. The library of Vivek overhaul. If you want a nice big library in Vivek, a little more grand, then go for it. I actually don't have this one installed, but uh, you know, I might install it. Rimmerose, Rimmerose, Rimmer, Rimmerose ground cover. This is my favorite ground cover. This one does take a little bit more to install. You'll have to go into your OpenMW and tell it that this is the ground cover to use, your OpenMW config file. I should show you how to do that, but um, it tells you how to do that over on moddingopenmw.org. Looks great, I turned my density up. So NPC schedule, normally in Morrowind, it's not like Oblivion and stuff or Skyrim where the NPCs come and go and do their things. The NPCs in Morrowind are always in a certain spot. This just gives them schedules, which basically means that at nighttime, they're not, the doors are closed and they're not standing outside or whatever they go inside or they, basically they just come and go versus, you know, for day versus night. It's not super elaborate, but it does make the game feel a little more genuine. As far as tree mods go, I like a few of Vert's mods, but I think Vert was really getting his start here with Morrowind. And Skyrim, Vert's uh, foliage or whatever, is my favorite, but I don't really use much of Vert's stuff in Morrowind except for this one. I like the leafy uh, West Gash trees. Those are cool. And we'll show you some more trees in just a minute. Marksman Overhaul just changes uh, bows and some damage on the bows. Makes it a little better. Yet another guard diversity. Um, there's a couple of these that I have installed and they just make the guards unique and diverse, different faces and stuff like that. So I've got a few of them installed. There we go. It just makes the game feel a little more uh, alive. I like the purest version. I actually like the big. As far as the bodies go, I like Robert's bodies. I'll make sure there's no nudity here. There we go. So I like Robert's bodies the best. Out of all the bodies, a little smoother. And I generally uh, stick with Robert's faces, but there are some um, faces called facelift that I use as well. Because the facelift is an AI upsampling and it does a better job versus the other AI upsampling. This better be important. Still looks pretty ridiculous, but it, it keeps the vanilla feel without getting too ridiculous. Some of the face replacers out there make the characters look way too smooth and like they're wearing way too much makeup and stuff. So I don't use those. And I have this Vert thing for vanilla heads. This is a tweak for vanilla heads. Then we've gotten better clothes complete. I've got a few clothing mods. This works with Robert's bodies. Just gives you new, new clothes, HD clothes. The Ashen Divide. This makes the uh, Ashen Divide area actually a place. Puts a couple dungeons in there. It just makes it a little more defined and it makes it feel a little more unique. It, it's cool. And then I added uh, Vert's trees for the Ashen Divide because they're kind of gnarly and wild. They're a little out there, like the shapes of them and stuff. Again, you can tell Vert was getting his start here, but I kind of like this ridiculous, like how, what kind of tree grows like this? It, it's silly and fun. So I put them there. You don't have to. I love this mushroom tree replacer. I like it better than some of the other mushroom trees. So I'm using that one. Um, Speechcraft is really necessary and frustrating and there's not much you can do with it, but this mod tries to do a few things. So I, I use that. Better Morrowind armor is cool. We've got these, oh no, boob armor. Someone's gonna get mad. Oh no. Somebody's angry. Girls have boobs. Oh no. I'm moving on. Something's not right. You know, whenever there's a dungeon nearby, a little thing will come up on the bottom of the screen and be like, oh, the air's not right. 
Even the insects have fallen silent. It's It's got that foreboding, old school fantasy feel. I installed it just for the, the goofiness of it. But I don't think you should use it unless you really want to. It's not really, I don't know. It, it sometimes it clues you into stuff that you wouldn't find on your own, and I'm not sure if that's good or bad. It's I guess it's subjective. Because you'll see this thing come up on the screen, and you'll be like, is there a dungeon somewhere that I'm missing? Oh, God, behind those trees. I didn't even see that entrance over there. You know, like, it's clued me in a couple of times. So I guess that's maybe that's good. I don't know. Go to jail. It changes the jail system to be more like Oblivion when you go to jail and you you're transported somewhere and you wake up and you're you're there and you have to get out of jail and stuff it just changes the jail system real signposts is you need this before let's see if it shows a before oh god you can't see it's so small before it's just random goofy letters it doesn't actually say there we go before and after it you need this you need real signposts familiar faces goes into some of the key faces and just makes them a little better see there's vanilla facelift and familiar faces it's a step, you know, you can install all of them in this order and then familiar faces will, it takes over like many of the key characters and just makes them a little bit better. Still, these faces are pretty ridiculous. Fixes some of the issues. Oh, look at that mustache now. I don't know, that, that, look at that chiseled mustache. That looks a little more natural. Khajiit's mouth looks a little better. Look at that Khajiit mouth. Oh, jeez. Vicious. So suave. Interior weather is cool. It can be immersion breaking because even if you're on the bottom floor of the most internal area of Vivek, if it's raining outside, you're going to hear that muffled rain sound. It really works if you're going into like a hut or a shack or a small place, or if you're on the top floor of a building in Vivek uh, or whatever, then it really works. So there's, it's a give and take, you know. There's no way for them to know. That, I mean, I guess they wouldn't. They, they could go in and say like, all right, listen, if you're on these levels of Vivek or individually say like yes and no to all the audio, but that would be a that would be a nightmare. This just plays the sound effects of weather if you're indoors. That's all. This is overkill. There's a supposed to be a inscribed rock in Margon. It's not there. This one puts an inscription on the rock. That's it. Uh, this is a really quick um, quest fix. There's a quest in the game. And the character tells you to go to the wrong place, gives you the gives you bad directions. This game's already hard enough as far as things are to find. This one corrects it so that they give you the, the right directions. All right, skies is beautiful. Changes up the skies. Beautiful new sky models. Uh, changes also the snow texture, which is interesting. Anyway, I like skies four. Um, but one thing I want to say is if you're going to install this, you have to go in and manually delete the rain. Um, texture or else because the rain texture does not work with OpenMW. You have to delete it manually. It's not that difficult to do. It's pretty easy, but um, if you're going to be doing this, I made a, a mod for this because the, the snow is far too heavy. So let me just grab that mod as well. So I made this by swindling some snow textures from Skyrim and putting them into this. When you're playing with skies, this is what the snow looks like. So I wanted to keep it kind of vanilla, or kind of not vanilla, I wanted to keep it kind of heavy, but like, you know, at least you can see now. So this is the snow that I put in there. I think it, it looks a lot better in motion. I'll show, I'll show some on the screen right now because I've got video footage. So there we go. And then I also installed AOF Skies, Area of Focus Skies. This I put on top. It has some really pretty skies as well. New cloud textures and stuff. It's, really, it's nice. Okay, expansion delay. When you first start the game with all the expansions installed, you get bombarded as soon as you're there. You have Dark Brotherhood assassins chasing you from the beginning. This just delays the start and allows you to start it on, on its own. So, yeah, um, I recommend this. The Balmora Underworld. Balmora Underworld. Just a little hatch, and you can go down, and there's all these lanterns and some just stuff going on. Dwemer Ruins. I don't want to show everything. It's it's fun to explore. It's a cool little area underneath Balmora. Just a little under city. And then Ebonheart, the same thing. I like these little like underground cities. Call Civi, we got sewers. Call them right now. What's the sewer count, like 300 at this point? More better clothes. This is an expansion for the better clothes that we saw just a little while ago. Nothing skimpy going on there. Passive cliff racers. You need this. If you've played Morrowind, you know that cliff racers are the bane of all of our existences. They chase you around, they make that stupid noise and as soon as you kill one, three more show up and they just chase you around the map. This makes cliff racers 
uh, passive. And there's also a way to have cliff, racer, um, cliff racers be passive, except for the blighted ones. Which is still cool, because then you'll still be running around and at least one of them will attack you, instead of all of them being passive. So the, so the blighted ones still attack. Weapon sheathing is an animation mod, works with OpenMW, allows you to sheath and draw your weapons. It's pretty cool, if you're playing in third person especially. So there's that. Bitter Night Sky, I like better than the sky that comes with Skies 4, so I install that on top of Skies 4. Uh, we got some high-res armors as well. This can go on top of the other better armors and stuff, because I like this better, but it doesn't cover as much as the better armors and all that stuff, so I install this one after that. Look at these pretty armors. Wondrous. I love these outfits. This game looks like nothing else. Like, just I wish we had games that looked like this nowadays, but we don't. And here's the um, high-res armors for, for OpenMW. This little collection of mods, there's a few in here that I grabbed, like, um, where is it? Ingredient weight, grab that one. A negative lights remover, you need this. You have to use negative lights remover if you're using the darker nights and some of the other um, per pixel lighting. And even if you're playing with MGEXE, you need negative lights remover. So that's good. And um, I use the scroll and potion icons. It makes it a little bit easier to tell what your different uh, scroll and potions are. And smaller potions, this is up to you because they're huge jugs in the game. Huge jugs, good lord. The comets, you know what I mean. True Knights and Darkness. So if you have all the other things installed, you can also install True Knights and Darkness. In order to make this work correctly with OpenMW, you are going to need to go in and change some individual files. Uh, all that's going to be noted on the OpenMW modding website that we talked about in the beginning. What you need to change. Welcome to the arena. There we go. Just expands the arena. Fight in there. Uh, animated uh, Morrowind patch. So this, there's some fixes that need to happen here. Some of them don't handle their loots and stuff correctly. This will fix some of that. This is, oh no. Oh no, they're sitting in properly. Just some of that. Um, it's, there's still some floating characters, but I've noticed, but it fixes a lot of that. So if you're using um, those upscaled fonts and you want some normal maps to give just better shading, better bump maps and stuff like that, or if you're using Lysol's textures, which I recommend, then you might want some of these. Normal maps, the Imperial Forts normal map, it's by Lysol. Uh, and Lysol's made a bunch of normal maps for other stuff. You can grab, this is an abandoned shack, it's just cool. You don't need it, but yeah, whatever. Bump maps, caverns here, as you can see, it's giving them that extra texture, that extra little, it looks much better than, um, yeah, bump maps for caverns and stuff. Now, as far as the landscape textures go, my favorite one is on this Russian website. It looks far better than any of the landscape textures that I found elsewhere. It looks really good with the grass mod that we have. It looks better than anything on the Nexus. Um, and it looks more similar to the vanilla, but just much better. So I use these landscape textures here. I downloaded the HQ version and it works just fine, but you can do medium quality if you're worried about performance or something like that. Low quality if you're on like legacy hardware, old school stuff. They look great. Scummy scum texture. Just adds a little, see like a little better scum texture. It's pretty. There's a retexture for that even. I don't know if I like the retexture better or not. I think I like the original one better, so I'm gonna get rid of that. And then there's an entire normal map um, project here. This is normal maps for basically the entire game. And it works as long as you're using that uh, AI up sample thing I showed you, because it's for the vanilla size textures. And it makes the entire game just have a little better shading and texture all over. I installed this one before those uh, normal map files for the other stuff, so because they, they go on top of that. Spriggins and Twiggins. Twiggins is if you're... Uh, Male Spriggan, you got a little, little twit, you get it? The Spriggans look better, you know? Don't have sex with Spriggans, you'll get splinters in your dick. Ugh. You want better Guar skin banners? These look almost too good. Like, they look almost like, the, like the effect in Photoshop is like they sharpened them too much, but it looks better than the original, especially with the world the way it is now, because you've upgraded a lot of the visuals in the world, so take it or leave it, it's, it's cool. All right, more just random texture replacers for different things. Just little things. Look at this feather different. Original, look at that new feather. Stuff that doesn't matter too much, but you know, if you want to retexture all kinds of things, why not? Long live the plates. It makes the plates so much prettier. Look at the, look at the before over there. Oh yeah, look at them ugly. Oh yes, after, whatever. You, you want better plates. And then look at this. Oh, look at the pottery and the plates and the platters. Which makes everything look a little better. Not going to change the gameplay. So long live the glassware now so same thing but now it's for glassware mm-hmm beautimus yes all right texture fix i was talking about look at that texture seam fix 
Yes, it changes the way the textures are oh, much better. Yeah, it just looks better. So yeah, I would recommend these texture fix, the seams in the world, because that looks awful, you know? Okay, let's talk about some more trees. We've got hybrid trees, which are very vanilla friendly, but just, you know, a little better look for the swamp area. Um, don't need to worry about that. If you want these goofy, um, they sort of look like cherry blossom trees. I like them, just to give the game a little more color. Some people are going to hate them with every fiber of their being, and that's fine. You can do that. Um, fire replacer here. It's not that big of a difference, but whatever. Soulstein trees replacer. Must look a little nicer. It's like a skinny Douglas fir. And then we've got the trees replacer for the for the graze lands. I actually like these a lot. Um, made by user deleted. All right. This fixes the mud crab mesh so that the UVs are a little better on there. Not, not that big of a deal. Uh, this is, a, I believe, down in the Blood Moon area. Just some updaters for textures in the Blood Moon area. Looks good. Up to you if you want it or not. Vanilla Friendly West Gash Trees Replacer. The trees are not amazing in, in this game. This is better than the vanilla. Still a little weird, but I, I didn't find any trees that I thought, oh, these are the best trees I've ever seen. All right, more Rimuro stuff. Skating Isle trees. Like I said, I, I like, I mean, I'm using these trees. They look okay, but don't love any of the trees, except for these big swamp trees that I'll show you in a minute. A few Nordic mesh improvements, just uh, cleaning them up a little bit. Nothing too crazy. Finery. So this makes uh, the super elite stuff unique. Tons of unique pieces instead of just having one fancy ri ring. Now we've got all these fine rings, you know, more little details to the game. Why not? Oh, this uh, this um, updates the, uh, the mushroom grove in the game. Makes it much bigger and cooler. I, I love the mushrooms in this game, these mushroom trees, so I'll take it. Vanilla Friendly Clan Fear Replacer. Let's see if we can show it with some light. There we go. It makes the Clan Fear look a lot better than the vanilla. I recommend it. Little raptor looking thing. Overlooked Meshes Replacer. Another mesh improvement update. A few things. So that's all. Small Cross Hair. I love this mod. And it's also, uh, it, it can be, uh, tell you, you know, be red if it's something that's owned by somebody else, but it just makes the crosshair small and more similar like the Skyrim. I usually uh, use the thumb button on my mouse here that you can purchase for money. Uh, but I use my thumb button right here to uh, make the, the interface toggle on and off. So that's always really cool when you're playing the game to toggle off the interface and just see the world and stuff. Better Robes, there's a few different robe uh, replacers, but Better Robes is the first one I installed. Makes the robes a little you know, better. And then uh, what else we have here? Uh, you can add Nurin Root to the game if you want to. It's up to you. The Sand Retexture. Really pretty. Retextured my sand. That one went. This restores a bunch of Morrowind uh, content into the game. Just stuff that was cut, wasn't there, but looked like it was there and finished. So you get a bunch more content from the original developers into the game. Restored. Uh, I like this bone mold bow better. It's pretty. Not that big of a deal. You can use it if you want to. All right, this concept for Balmora, it changes things to look like the concept art. Because right now, that's what we got with the vanilla game. This adds, the, and it just makes the place feel a little more lived in. So I actually like the way this this came out before. All right, so uh, Solstein, Tomb of the Snow Prince. Um, this upgrades some of the Blood Moon environments. It's pretty too, it's really pretty. The Rain Replacer. I like a little heavier rain uh, drop. This one looks good. Remember, you have to delete that raindrop texture from Skies. So you can do that just by right-clicking on your like mod organizer. Oh, shoot. There we go, where's my Skies? So what I did is I just right-click and then you can uh, open and explore. Inside this folder, you just go into your textures and you'll see a TX raindrop. I've already deleted it, but it'll just be the one that says raindrop. You just delete it after you have it installed here in Mod Organizer. Super easy to delete. All right, here's the robe overhaul. Install this one after the other one because it fills in the gaps and goes far beyond what that other one did. And I love the, the sort of burlappy looking texture and stuff. This is an upgrade for the containers and buckets and stuff. Focus on super specific things. I guess some people are super nerdy about that kind of stuff. Uh, this one fixes some of the La Femme armor. This bondage outfit is so goofy. I'm playing a um, female uh, red guard. And then we have the better fitted armors here as well, which just cinch them a little bit more. Nothing unrealistic, like we're not talking one piece characters here, even though that's a little bit too cinched. Like you gotta have a waist in there. But it does make the armors look a little... I mean, stuff looks a little blocky in this game. This does give things a little more of a shape. It's not necessary. Plenty of unique jewelry here. Some more unique stuff. Weapon, weapon sheaths. Now, since we have the weapon sheathing animation, we also need some sheaths for the weapons that don't have them. So this adds sheaths to a lot of the weapons. And then we have Remoro's uniques, some unique special weapons. Like if you have like a certain, like this is a certain mace or a 
fancy pair of shoes that's a secret pair of shoes, it, it creates a unique mesh just for them so that they have their own special thing and it's not just a regular pair of shoes that's called the magic shoes or something, you know? Oh, this I believe is a, a dungeon from the, um, the main campaign. I believe that's what this is, but it just redoes it, makes it a little more ominous. Okay, let's talk about these swamp trees. You want some big swamp trees that puts a goofy, huge canopy over the swamp? Well, these are fun. <laughs> They've got these ginormous roots too and stuff. They're not friendly like the vanilla game, but they're fun. I just use the regular version, not the huge roots version, because there's a, yet another mod for that. You want a unique Azura star? That's the best soul gem in the game. All right, so you want to overhaul uh, Voss and Telvoss, the crazy big cities, Telvini cities or whatever. You can do so, and they have a huge version of the tower. It's almost ridiculous, but um, this does hit your frame rate a little bit too much for my taste. But if you want to go crazy, this is it's a bit of fun, you know. OAAB Telmora. I love these cities. You have to experience this. If you're playing Morrowind, go find these cities and look around. So, and this just adds some waterfalls and some cool stuff, new underground areas. A lot of the OAAB stuff um, is pretty cool. I had those in there, just different integrations for stuff. Where'd you get them abs? I didn't know this game had abs. A little upgrade for Caldera. I didn't find this uh, taxed my FPS at all, and I liked what it added. So just, again, another thing that makes the stuff feel a little more alive. Caldera and I think Ebonheart feel probably like the most medieval-y out of everything, the most typical fantasy out of a lot of the cities, but this is this one's even more so because it's more of a city and less of just an Imperial stronghold. This fire replacer fixes the UV so that it lights correctly, but it's whatever. Haunted Barra. So this changes uh, so that the whispers when you're in Solstein are different whispers, different sound effects and stuff. So it's not the same as when you're just in any other um, haunted tomb or something like that. It gives the barrows their own sound, which is cool. Uh, this outfit's cool. I mostly wanted it for the mask. Like, I love that mask. I don't have the outfit, but I installed this mod just so I could get that mask. I love all the masks that are in this game, especially the cephalopod mask that the Telvini wear. Dragon statue replacer in Ebonheart. Just gives you a better dragon statue. Why not? All right, here's the swamp trees I like. I actually don't install the other ones. I install these. These are the ones that add the huge canopy. And these are ridiculous. So yeah, this is not like the vanilla game. If you haven't played the vanilla game, maybe play it without these trees first. But I, I love the, you know, being under this canopy and stuff. It's a different feel. Our mock. Sounds like a Klingon word. The city needed some upgrading, needed some more stuff. Just didn't feel robust. And this one does a, a better job of making it feel more like an actual place. So I like a lot of these city upgrades. Better Dwarven uh, Spectres. You can, it even changes the name to Dwemer just to keep lore friendly. The Spectres, uh, both male and female, look a little better. And what's she doing there? She is getting down. Like, yeah. Glowing flames, yes. And the glows are mapped properly now with some of these little flames. Better Dunmer uh, strong, uh, Strongholds. These strongholds are like the size of a city. They are so goofy huge. But this upgrades them. So that they're not just, I mean, before they were kind of just big chunky places without much going on. Now that adds like some flora, some more stuff, you know, just makes them feel a little more used and lived in and a little more unique because there's so many different ones of these just throughout the different areas, mostly in the Ashlands and stuff. Oh, that was pretty cool. Pervasive speech allows you to ask anyone who has a hundred percent, you know, like if they have a hundred percent towards you, you can say, hey, do you want to adventure with me? And they'll be like, sure. And then they'll be your companion. They're not, it's not going to be like Skyrim or anything where the companions chat with you and have like dialogue and stuff like that. So that is my list for now. There's one other thing that I'm going to put in the description and that is those Rimuro's, um grass meshes. I found some of them to be a little bit too green. A little, they, they pop too much. They don't look natural. They look almost like neonish green. So I took those and change them myself. I'm going to message Rimuro and just see like, hey, is it, or I think it's dark or whatever uh, is the modder and be like, hey, can I, um, or I forgot who modded that stuff. I'm just going to ask if it's okay if I change the color and upload them again and they'll just be a texture replacer. I'm using them myself, but I want to make sure it's okay that I upload them before I change those and upload them. But that's it. That's how I'm playing Morrowind, all 200 of those mods. You don't need to use them all. And again, I want to reiterate that this is not a tutorial on how to mod. But remember, if you do want to mod, you go to modding uh, hyphen openmw.com and then just pick a list and go through it. You'll have a good time. And you just, you know, you can install just a few mods, a few of those graphical mods, and uh, maybe a few other mods, and you're you're good to go. It's a fun game. So that's it. That's how to how to mod up uh, Oblivion. I'm tired. 
Everyone's gonna be like, do Oblivion next. So that's how you mod Morrowind. All right, I'm gonna go now. Oh yeah, by the way, epicpants.com. If you get this uh, now, maybe it'll uh, get there before whatever holiday you celebrate. Okay, that's enough of that. Epicpants.com, see you in the comments. Mud crabs, yes. That's my Daggerfall music in the background because, uh, you know, once you play this game for a while, the music starts to uh, repeat quite often. So if you wanted to switch out the music, there are folders. You can just drop whatever music you want in there, put some classical music, Mozart, whatever you want. I don't even care. You could even put heavy metal, put, put some black metal in there. And so we grant you humility. If you're looking to spend a few coins, you'll love my selection. What is it, Outlander? Move along, Lalu.
Can I help you out? Do you need something? Bit it out or hit the road. 